A man isolated from society can drive himself insane, and that's exactly what happened to Robinson Crusoe. Robinson's isolation began when he survived a dreadful storm and shipwreck, finding himself on a desolate island with the rest of his ship's company drowned and himself barely alive. This tale parallels the real-life experiences of Alexander Selkirk, whose life was devastatingly changed by a shipwreck. Alone in the dark, trapped between raging seas, both men encountered real loneliness and danger far beyond what any legend could convey. Join us as we explore the horrors of being on an isolated island. Chapter 1. Ocean, Isolation and Endurance of Selkirk Alexander Selkirk was born in 1676 in Lower Lago, Fife, Scotland. He was one of seven children in the family of a shoemaker and leather worker named John Selcraig and his wife, Euphan Mackey. Selkirk's hometown was typical of the Scottish lowlands with its tough landscapes and strong people. Growing up, Alexander lived in a lively household in a town close to the sea, which naturally led many locals to become sailors. However, life in Lower Lago wasn't just about sailing and dreams of the sea. It was also a tough place with strict rules about how to live and behave. From a very young age, Selkirk showed he was different. He loved freedom and adventure, traits that didn't fit well in his strict community. His father, who had strict religious views, probably hoped Alexander would follow a more traditional path in life. However, Selkirk was captivated by the ocean, a symbol of freedom and the unknown. By the end of the 1690s, he had become skilled in seafaring, having been on many trips at sea. For Selkirk, the sea was more than an escape from his strict upbringing. It was a chance to make his mark in the world during the exciting times of privateering, a period when sailors could legally attack and rob ships from enemy countries. This was a dangerous job, but it offered great rewards and fame for those willing to take the risk. But life as a sailor brought its own set of challenges. In 1701, Selkirk found himself in trouble back in Scotland. He had to go to court for behaving badly in church, which was a big deal back then. Some people think this trouble, along with his love for adventure, may have been why Selkirk decided to leave Scotland behind and join a privateering trip far from the strict rules of his homeland. This decision would set him on a path to an unimaginable adventure and turn him into a legendary figure of survival and resilience. In the year 1703, a significant change happened in Alexander Selkirk's life. He became a crew member of the Sinker Ports, a British privateering ship. The ship was led by the infamous Captain William Dampier. This journey was not ordinary, it was a mission with the goal of attacking and looting Spanish vessels and their coastal areas in the Pacific Ocean. This was during a time known as the War of the Spanish Succession. For Selkirk, this was a chance to leave behind his previous life and chase after wealth and new experiences. On this ship, Selkirk wasn't just another sailor. He stood out for his excellent navigation skills and knowledge of the seas. Because of this, he was given a high-ranking role as the sailing master on the Cinque ports. But this adventure was not without its troubles. From the very beginning, the mission faced many problems, the condition of the ships was poor, and they were not well equipped for a long voyage. The crew, a diverse group of privateers and thrill-seekers, didn't always work well together. They had different backgrounds and often disagreed. But even in these tough conditions, Selkirk showed that he was a skilled and clever sailor. He could handle difficult situations and make smart decisions. However, Selkirk's strong personality led to conflicts. He was very independent and sometimes disagreed with his leaders. His most significant disagreements were first with Captain Dampier and then with Thomas Stradling, who later became the captain of the Cinque Ports. Selkirk was stubborn and did not shy away from arguing with his captains, 
if he believed he was right. This part of his character, his unwillingness to back down, would eventually lead him to make a life-changing choice. He decided he would rather be left alone on an uninhabited island than continue on a dangerous journey in a ship that was falling apart. From the choppy waves of conflict to the silence of solitude, Selkirk's journey takes a dramatic turn as he faces the vast ocean alone. Chapter 2. Alone Against the Wild, Selkirk's epic island ordeal, the Sink Reports, sailed the big Pacific Ocean, stopping at islands to get supplies and fight with other ships. During this time, Alexander Selkirk started to feel unhappy and worried. He realized that being a pirate wasn't as exciting as he thought. His problems grew until he was left on the Juan Fernandez Islands. This started his amazing story of living alone and surviving. The big change in Selkirk's life started in 1703 when he joined the Tinque Ports, a British pirate ship. The ship, led by Captain William Dampier, worked with another ship, the St. George. Their job was to attack Spanish ships in the South Pacific during a big war called the War of the Spanish Succession. For Selkirk, this was a big chance to start over and have an adventure away from Scotland. When they first set out, everyone on the ship was excited. They all dreamed of finding treasure and becoming famous. Selkirk, known for being good at navigating, became important on this adventure. But soon, the trip became tough. The Cinque Ports were small and crowded, making it easy for people to get sick. They didn't have good food, mostly just dry meat and hard biscuits, and not enough fresh water. This made people weak and sick with scurvy, a disease from not having enough fresh fruits. Captain Dampier knew a lot about the sea, but wasn't good at keeping the crew happy and working together. He didn't get along with many of them, including Selkirk. Problems got worse when Thomas Stradling, who was younger and less experienced, became the captain of the Cinque Ports. Selkirk didn't agree with Stradling's decisions, thinking they were dangerous and foolish. The journey got harder as the ship faced bad weather and started to fall apart. The crew was tired, scared, and losing hope. When they stopped at the Juan Fernandez Islands near Chile, things came to a head. Selkirk was really worried about the ship. He thought it was too damaged to sail safely. He argued that they needed to fix it properly before going any further. He believed that going back to sea without fixing the ship would be very dangerous. This argument led to Selkirk's unforgettable adventure of survival. Stradling wanted to continue their journey and did not listen to Selkirk's worries. They argued a lot and Selkirk was very stubborn, saying he would rather stay alone on the island than go on a dangerous ship. Finally, because he was upset and maybe looking for an adventure, Selkirk chose to stay on the island. Stradling was happy to leave him there because he was causing problems. So Selkirk ended up on the island, hoping another ship would come to save him soon. The story of Alexander Selkirk surviving alone on the Juan Fernandez Islands shows how strong and clever humans can be. He got stuck there in September 1704 and had to live in a tough place all by himself. He showed amazing strength and smartness to stay alive. At first, Selkirk only had a few things with him. A gun, some gunpowder and bullets, a knife, a pot to cook in, a Bible and some clothes. He felt very alone, scared and sad at the beginning. The island was full of plants and animals, but was strange and scary to him. He had to learn how to live there fast. Selkirk managed to live because he used what he found on the island well. At first, he ate shellfish and sea lions from the sea, which were easy to find and catch. These creatures from the sea helped him not to starve, but he knew he had to find a better way to keep getting food to stay alive for a long time. One of his first big problems 
was to find clean drinking water. He looked around the island and found springs of fresh water, which was very important. Then he needed to find more food. Luckily, there were wild goats on the island, left by people from Spain before. These goats were very important for Selkirk. They gave him meat and milk. As time went by, he got very good at catching these goats, first using his gun until he had no more gunpowder, and then running after them, showing how strong and fast he had become. From survival to settlement, Selkirk adapts to island life crafting a new existence far from the world he knew. Chapter 3. A Thousand Miles Apart, Mastering Solitude In the wild, finding a place to live was really important for Selkirk. At first, he used what he knew about navigation to pick a good place to set up his camp. He made two shelters from the wood of pimento trees. He used one shelter for sleeping and the other one for cooking. He chose a spot close to fresh water and where he could easily see if any ships were coming. As time passed, the days turned into months and Selkirk had to think about his clothes. His old clothes were ripped and couldn't be used anymore. He started wearing clothes made from the skins of goats, which he put together using a nail and plant fibers from the island. This change was not just about staying warm and safe from the weather, but it also showed how much he had become part of the island. Selkirk also changed what he ate. He started eating vegetables like turnips and cabbage leaves found on the island, and sometimes he could catch lobsters and turtles to eat. Even though he ate the same things a lot, his meals were good for him and kept him strong. Interestingly, he even tamed some wild cats on the island. These cats became his friends and helped him by keeping the rats away from his camp. But living alone was about more than just staying alive. Selkirk had to keep his mind healthy too. Being all by himself, without anyone else to talk to, was very hard. He could have lost his mind from the loneliness and missing other people. To fight these feelings, he read his Bible and sang songs from church. These activities made him feel better and kept him connected to the life he had before he was alone on the island. They helped him remember who he was and gave him hope and comfort during the tough times. Selkirk made sure he kept busy by constantly looking out for any ships. He would climb to the very top of the island, hoping to see a ship that could take him back home. This activity was something he looked forward to because it gave him hope and a reason to keep going. But there were times when he felt very disappointed. For example, once some Spanish sailors came to the island and Selkirk had to quickly hide in the forest to avoid being caught. He managed to stay hidden and safe, which made him even more determined to keep surviving until someone could rescue him. Over time, Selkirk chained a lot. He went from being a neat sailor to a tough, quick person who could run and climb just like someone born on the island. His fur. His feet got used to the hard ground, and he learned to move around the island quickly and without fear. His long time alone on the Juan Fernandez Islands teaches us a lot about how strong a person's mind can be. Selkirk lived by himself for a very long time, which can make anyone feel very lonely and sad. At first, Selkirk felt extremely lonely and missed being around people terribly. Going from a life where he was always with others to being completely alone was a huge shock. He had to deal with the quiet, no one to talk to, and feeling completely cut off from the world. This kind of sudden change can make a person go through really tough times mentally making them feel anxious, depressed, angry, or even losing touch with reality. In the beginning, Selkirk struggled a lot with his feelings. He missed other people terribly and would often look out to sea, hoping to see a ship that could take him home. This time was really hard for him emotionally. He felt left behind by everyone and was unsure if he would ever be rescued. This uncertainty 
made him feel very alone and scared. But as more time went by, Selkirk started to get used to his new situation. He began to rely on his instincts to stay alive and came up with daily routines and ways to deal with being by himself. One of the main ways Selkirk coped with his loneliness was by getting closer to nature. The island, full of different plants and animals, turned into his new home. He learned a lot about the environment and used this knowledge to help him survive. This connection to nature probably made him feel like he was part of something bigger, which is really important when you're feeling alone. Being involved with nature not only gave him something to do every day, but also kept his mind working well and helped him stay clear of the loneliness that can come from being all by yourself. Another big thing that helped Selkirk keep his sanity was setting up a regular schedule for himself. He had specific tasks he needed to do every day, like hunting for food, collecting fruits and vegetables, and taking care of his living space. Having these tasks gave him a feeling of normal life and some control over his day-to-day -day life, which was really important because there wasn't much else he could control. This regular routine made his life more predictable and helped him feel more secure even though he was in a situation that was anything but normal. Selkirk's ability to keep a regular routine not only helped him manage the physical challenges of survival, but also provided mental and emotional stability. By focusing on daily tasks, he could create a sense of achievement and progress, which is critical for maintaining one's morale in isolation. Additionally, these routines helped break the monotony of each day and gave him clear goals to work towards. This sense of accomplishment, no matter how small, was vital for his self-esteem and for keeping a positive outlook. Moreover, Selkirk's adaptation to his solitary life on the island showcases the incredible adaptability of the human spirit. Despite the initial despair and loneliness, he found ways to stay mentally active and engaged. He became attuned to the rhythms of nature, which not only provided him with physical sustenance, but also emotional and spiritual fulfillment. This deep immersion in the natural world allowed him to develop a resilience that was crucial for his long-term survival and well-being. Alone in nature, Selkirk relies on his beliefs and cleverness to help him through the tough times of being by himself, slowly finding a bit of calm inside. Chapter 4. Island Echoes In the dark night, Alexander Selkirk found peace and comfort in his religious beliefs. He had very few things with him, but his Bible was important to him. It helped him feel better when he was sad or scared. Reading from the Bible and singing religious songs were not just spiritual activities for him, they also kept his mind sharp and his memory intact. These religious habits probably gave him hope and helped him deal with being stuck on the island. Selkirk was also very creative in finding ways to survive. He made new tools and clothes for himself. He even made friends with some of the island's wild cats, which kept him company and made him feel less lonely. These creative activities made him feel good about himself and his ability to handle difficult situations. Spending time in nature, following a daily routine, practicing his religion, and being creative were all crucial for Selkirk to keep his mind healthy. But these activities did more than just help him get through each day. They changed him deeply. Over time, Selkirk changed from a lonely sailor to someone who was very much in harmony with his surroundings and himself. He became a strong and adaptable person, showing how flexible and resilient people can be. Living alone on the Juan Fernandez Islands, Alexander Selkirk faced many scary and dangerous situations. This added a lot of stress to his already difficult life of surviving alone. 
one of the scariest things was the possibility of being found and taken away by others. The fear of being caught and possibly thrown into jail, forced into slavery or killed was always there, especially because England and Spain were at war. One sunny day, a Spanish ship appeared near the island, causing great worry for Alexander Selkirk. He knew that being caught by the Spanish sailors could lead to really bad outcomes, such as being thrown into prison or worse. Faced with a very difficult decision, Selkirk thought about whether to show himself to the sailors or stay hidden and hope they wouldn't find him. In the end, he chose to stay hidden, using what he knew about the Island to keep himself safe. Selkirk found a good hiding spot in the densey, green forest of the island. He moved very carefully, making sure he didn't make any sounds that might alert the sailors to his presence. The Spanish sailors began to search the land, looking everywhere for signs of people, but they didn't find Selkirk. He had to be extremely quiet and still, especially when the sailors came close to where he was hiding. The air was filled with tension, and Selkirk felt his heart pounding in his chest. He knew he had to be patient and smart to stay undiscovered. The time seemed to drag on, but finally, after what felt like forever, the sailors went back to their ship and sailed away. Selkirk breathed a huge sigh of relief, feeling safe once more. However, this scary event made him even more careful in the future, constantly reminding him that danger was never far away. However, the dangers on the island weren't limited to the Spanish ship. The island itself was a challenging and dangerous place to live. It was filled with steep hills and rocky cliffs that could cause injuries. If Selkirk fell or got hurt, there was no one to help him. There were no doctors or medicine on the island. Because of this, Selkirk had to be extremely cautious every single day. He had to watch his step whether he was gathering food, finding water, or simply walking around the island. The island was not just rough terrain, it was also home to dangerous animals. Some animals could be poisonous, and others might attack if they felt threatened. Despite these dangers, Selkirk found ways to live alongside these creatures. He became skilled at hunting the island's goats, which provided him with both food to eat and materials to make clothes. He also paid close attention to the island's weather and the ocean tides, learning the best times to gather food or explore new areas. When ships appear in the distance, Selkirk must handle new challenges, caught between his old life and the big scary future ahead. Chapter 5 The Remarkable Tale of a Lone Survivor After living alone for over four years, Alexander Selkirk's lonely life on the Juan Fernandez Islands changed dramatically with the arrival of a ship led by Captain Woods Rogers. This moment was a big change in his life, ending his long period of isolation and starting a new chapter where he had to get used to being around people again. This change was both exciting and full of new challenges. On the second day of February in the year 1709, Selkirk saw two ships coming toward the island. These were not just any ships, but English privateer ships named the Duke and the Duchess, and they were under the command of Captain Woods Rogers. For Selkirk, seeing these ships was like seeing a light at the end of a very long, dark tunnel. He felt a storm of feelings all at once. Hope that he might be rescued, relief that he was no longer alone, fear of the unknown, and disbelief that this moment was really happening. He had spent so many days and nights looking out to the sea, hoping for a sign of rescue, and finally, his patience had paid off. When Rogers and his crew came ashore, Selkirk must have looked like a creature from another world. He was dressed in clothes made from goat skins, far from the look of the sailors he was approaching. His first moments with the crew were filled with happiness, mixed with confusion. He found it hard to speak because he hadn't used his voice in a long conversation for so many years. He had almost forgotten how to speak English. But even with his broken words and gestures, 
he was able to share his unbelievable story with the surprised sailors. They couldn't believe what they were hearing. Captain Rogers showed Selkirk kindness and understanding. He gave him clothes to replace his worn-out animal skins and helped him clean up, shaving. He gave him clothes to replace his worn-out animal skins and helped him clean up, shaving off his long beard and cutting his hair, which helped Selkirk start to look like the sailor he once was again. This act of kindness was more than just helping him change his appearance. It was the first step in helping Selkirk adapt back to living with other people, a life he hadn't known for a very long time. Selkirk's encounter with Rogers and his crew was a major turning point. Not only did it mark the end of his isolation, but it also marked the beginning of his journey back to civilization. Alexander Selkirk's reintroduction to living among people started with small but very important steps. The change from being alone to being on a ship full of people was tough. After years of eating only what he could find or catch on the island, like fresh fruits and roasted goats, the salty preserved food on the ship made his stomach upset. He also found it hard to wear shoes again after all this time. His feet had grown used to being bare and had become very tough from walking on the island's rough terrain. These physical problems were signs of a bigger issue. Selkirk had to get used to a way of living that now felt strange and unfamiliar to him. But the challenges weren't just physical, mentally and emotionally, Selkirk had a lot to adjust to. He had to remember how to act around other people and understand social cues again. Things he hadn't had to think about while he was alone. The constant noise and having people around all the time were the opposite of the quiet and solitude he had gotten used to. Yet, Selkirk showed incredible strength. He slowly got used to life among others again, taking up his old skills as a navigator and sailor, proving that he was still very capable despite his long isolation. The trip back to the world he had left behind was a time for Selkirk to think deeply about his life. He had managed to survive in circumstances most people could never imagine, but now he faced different kinds of challenges. The island had changed him in many ways, how he looked, how he thought, and how he felt about life. He had come to know himself better than ever before, understanding his own strengths and weaknesses through his time alone. When Selkirk arrived back in London in 1711, people were fascinated by his story. He became a bit of a sensation as people were captivated by his tales of survival. But while his story made him famous, Selkirk felt out of place in the bustling, crowded city. The loud, busy streets were a sharp contrast to the peaceful, slow-paced life he had lived on the island. But returning home wasn't just about adjusting to the physical and social environment. Selkirk had to deal with personal challenges too. He had to reconnect with his family and find his place again in a community that had moved on without him. The emotional scars from his time on the island didn't just disappear. They were a part of him now. The impact of Alexander Selkirk's incredible ordeal on a deserted island significantly influenced the creation of Daniel Defoe's famous book, Robinson Crusoe, which was published in 1719. This book is often thought of as the first English novel and is a well-known classic in literature. The story of Crusoe, who is stranded on an uninhabited island and has to deal with being completely alone while trying to survive, is very similar to what Selkirk went through. Although Robinson Crusoe is a fictional story with added details and changes for the sake of the story, the similarities to Selkirk's real-life adventures are very clear. Defoe's character, Crusoe, like Selkirk, is very clever, strong, and thoughtful. He does things like hunting, taming animals, and making a home for himself out of the wild, 
just like Selkirk did. The book looks at what it means to be human when faced with extremely difficult situations, taking inspiration from Selkirk's true story of survival and ingenuity. Selkirk's story didn't just inspire Defoe, it caught the attention of many people. When he came back to normal life, people were very interested in him. Stories about how he survived were popular and widely read, and he became kind of famous in the early 1700s in Britain. He was asked to share his story in magazines and books, and even in person. This interest from the public shows how much people were fascinated by stories of adventure, survival, and distant lands. Especially during a time when sea exploration was growing and countries were starting to establish colonies overseas. But even with all this attention, Selkirk found it hard to get used to life with other people again. The simple, quiet life he had lived on the island had a big impact on him, making it tough to adapt to the busy and complex life of society. He had a hard time connecting with other people, including his own family, and he often talked about wanting to go back to living at sea. This feeling of not fitting in shows how deeply his time alone had changed him and how he felt about where he belonged. In the later years of his life, Selkirk went back to the sea, which felt more like home to him. He joined the Royal Navy and then worked on private ships, continuing his adventurous life until he died from yellow fever in 1721 while on a ship near Africa. His life after the Iceland was a constant search for meaning and a place where he felt he belonged, a journey that reflects the deep questions many people think about in their own lives. The influence of Alexander Selkirk goes beyond just inspiring a famous book or becoming a well-known story. His life has become a symbol of human strength and the ability to adapt. It makes people think deeply about what it means to be human, the importance of other people and community, and how someone can keep going when faced with really hard situations. The image of someone surviving alone on a deserted island has become a strong theme in stories and movies, representing the ultimate challenge of survival, finding oneself, and facing one's deepest fears and wants. Today, Selkirk's story is still meaningful, maybe even more so in our world that's full of constant noise and distractions. His experience makes people think about the importance of being alone and connecting with nature, and it shows the basic human traits of being strong and resilient. The story of this man from the 18th century who survived alone on an island continues to be relevant, reminding us all of the incredible power of the human spirit and our ability to get through very tough situations. Was Alexander Selkirk's survival? More about his strength or just luck? Share your thoughts, smash that like and subscribe for more.